We'll start with the geometry network. I'll call it sim. I'll change the color here. And let's dive inside. I'll create a circle, a circle polygon. And this is that. Let's change the orientation here. I'll change it to Z, Z X plane so that it is facing up. Change the division and reverse the normals so that normals are facing up. OK, so that is the first step. The second thing that I'm going to do is I need to remesh this. I need to remesh this geometry so that we have enough triangles or enough points for our geometry, which is going to behave as close to have to, to properly simulate. So I'm changing the target size to 0 0.075 to have enough points or enough triangles there. I'm going to create transformations a lot of copies here so I'm using a copy and transform um, so now let's come to the copy and transform node I'm going to create I think 20 20 total copies here uh, we can pack and create instances but let's not do that just create 20 20 instances 20 copies here and they're sitting on top of each other so let's move them a bit in the y direction and then I get a y direction so I change the translation to minus 0 0.03 in the y and also uniformly scale them to 1.0 to 1 so that we have some let me create a vellum cloth constraint vellum cloth configure and the vellum cloth constraint gives two important properties to our geometry of our mesh which is the the stretchiness of our cloth it controls how stretchy the cloth is going to be and the bendiness of our cloth how bendy our cloth is going to be the stiffness for stretchiness and the stiffness for bend stiffness uh, for bendiness is going to be like this uh, after setting up our cloth constant what we can do is i'll just set up a vellum solver and here what i want is i'm just going to increase the sub steps to two okay and now that we have our subsessor tool, what we can do is we can actually run this, run this sim and see what happens. If you come to the forces, you can see that we have gravity force. And now let's run this. So as you can see, because of the gravity force, the cloth pieces that we have here are just going down. And that's what I was expecting with the with the force of gravity affecting the clothes this is what should have been happening so let's just change the gravity to zero we do not want any gravity we will dive inside of our vellum solver and what I'll do is I'll just use a pop wind pop wind force so use a pop wind and here we want our cloth to go up Okay, we want them to move up. So what we have to do is we have to create a create a wind velocity in the y direction. Okay, in the positive y direction. So what I'm going to do is instead of creating instead of creating just one singular uh, value, I'm just going to run a sine function here. So sine at the rate frame. So throughout our 240 frames uh, with the help of the sine function we will be getting we will be changing the wind velocity value okay so to visualize that what we can do is if i run this okay you won't be able to see it i have to move it one by one so let's move it at zero i'll just turn it on and if i run this I'll go outside let's see if everything is fine yeah so everything is fine what we need to do is just I'll just go inside I'll select pop wind and if I visualize this you can see if I move the frames you can see that the values are changing as the frame number changes okay so so that is that that's what you wanted but if you see the values are running from positive 
0 0.9 to negative 0 0.9 somewhere here okay the values are running from positive 1 to negative 1 or positive 0 0.9 to negative 0 0.9 and uh, it is running through 240 frames and we need a lot more lot more frequency so I'm just multiplying the frame by 20 and uh, to visualize something I think we'll have to change this and now if I change it you can see that the values are changing faster here okay and that's what we want we need we need the velocity to be changing constantly and uh, because this is going from negative to positive direction we can uh, remap this values with the help of a fit we do not want the wind velocity to be going negative so what I'm doing here is I'm using a fit function and the values are going from 0 0.9 to minus 0 0.9 and we will be running them from 0 0.1 we will be remapping them from 0 0.1 to 1.75 and I can close the bracket here. Now if you see this, you can see that it will be going positive and I can change the amplitude here as well one point to something like 1.45. And now if I run the simulation, let's see what we are getting. Okay, the simulation is not working. Let me just come here and reset the viewport. Sometimes there's a bug and it doesn't allow our viewport to see the real time things. So now that we are running our simulation, you can see that the clothes are moving upwards. And that is happening because we have set our wind velocity and the wind velocity is changing in the y direction and the changed value is always going to be positive it is going from 0 0.1 to 1.75 the velocity value because we wanted our values to be positive for our y to not go negative because if if the wind velocity was negative it would be going down okay so this is nice this is working this is working fine what we need now is a bit of collider not a bit of collider but a bit of other forces and a lot of and maybe something something that collides with our geometry here with our meshes cloth here so let's do that and for that what I'm going to do is I'll be creating a platonic solid platonic solids this is that okay and uh, let me just decrease the size to 0 0.4548 and let me just put a template here and we have our clothes here okay so let's just move it up a bit so what I can do is change the position in the Y something like 0 0.66 and I'll rotate this as well so let's rotate this I'll rotate it in the in the x direction something like this let's change the value to around 0 0.6 oh sorry 60 60 degrees I need to change the rotation value of this not our cloth geometry so just make sure that the handle is here okay so this is looking nice we can change or rotate it in other directions like y and z as well just rotate it to a point where you like it something like this maybe i'm playing too much with it i just shouldn't i should just let it be okay so yeah this is this is nice what i can do next is i'll just use a poly bevel to bevel those sharp edges on our platonic platonic solid so maybe I can increase the distance to around 0 0.09 and let's change the divisions to 0 to 4 or 5 4 looks good okay 
let's use a subdivide just to give it some more geometry here the collider also needs good amount of geometry and we can connect it on our job our colliding input okay in our vellum constant now what we can do is we can run the simulation and let's see what we are getting okay so the clothes are the cloth pieces are properly colliding with our platonic solid and that's what we wanted and we are getting a good shape here what we can do is we can add some more forces here so i'm going to use a pop force <laughs> 